Hey there, how are you doing? This is our last art assignment for the school year. I've really loved working with you and I look forward to when we can all get back together again and do some art together real live in person. But for now, we're online. So these are the things that you're going to need for today. You'll need a piece of paper. And if you have Mod Podge or white glue like this, just a bottle of white glue, that would be great. If you only have a glue stick, that's okay too. You'll also need some tissue paper. So it's, uh, if you have plain white paper, that's really the best. Um, sometimes people have tissue paper that they use for stuffing in gift bags. If you, if you don't have any plain white, something really light, like a really pale pink or pale blue would be the best. Um, something like black or purple or red or really dark or bright colors like pink, bright pink or green, those aren't going to work for us today. So see if you can find some um, paper. Maybe your parents went shopping and they bought a shirt and the shirt is wrapped up with white tissue paper. So see if you can use some of that. And then you're going to need a pencil and some paint. So if you have watercolor paints, that would be great. So why don't you grab those and meet me back here in just a minute. All right, well, we're back, and I'm glad that you got your things together. I'm going to be using a paintbrush, and I'm using a big jar of Mod Podge today, so uh, that's going to be my glue, but if you have white glue, that will work just fine. Um, I do not have any white tissue paper at home, but I do have this really pale pink, so I'm going to be using that today. And the first step in this is going to be, let's crinkle it up. Okay, so I don't, you don't have to make a super tight ball, but do get some good wrinkles on there. And then you want to open it back up again and set it aside for a minute while we put the glue on. Um, you want to make sure that you get glue all over the entire piece of paper. Okay, so I made sure that all the edges of my paper are all covered with the glue. And then I'm gonna take this, and by the way, this is slightly bigger than my piece of paper. If you don't have anything bigger than your piece of paper, you can actually tear up little pieces and kind of collage them onto your paper. So if you have some gaps where the tissue paper is not covering your drawing paper, you're okay, it's fine. Okay, so I'm going to put it on here, and as I put it on, I'm just going to maybe start at one edge up here at the top and just press it on, but I'm sort of wrinkling it on purpose as I go. I'm kind of pressing it together here and there with my fingers and creating wrinkles, and I'm trying to have the whole sheet mostly covered, but like I said, if you don't have a big enough piece of tissue paper and it doesn't cover everything, you're fine. So once you have it all nice and stuck on there, what you might do is turn it over. I have some drawings on the other side, so that's what you see here. It's just a recycled piece of paper. So I just turned it over and pressed it down so that everything is really nicely attached. And then I want to quickly do another layer of glue over the top. Okay, now when you have everything all glued, you're going to set it aside to dry, but I just wanted to say that the reason that I glued over the top of everything is number one, to kind of get things to stick better. So there were areas where I had maybe a fold or something and it was sort of flapping. Um, I glued that down so it flattens out everything. And the other thing is, is I wanted to put a protective layer on here because when you're painting with watercolor paints on top of tissue paper, the paint sinks right in really fast. It's like painting on a paper towel and it doesn't, it's not a good effect and it's frustrating. So having this layer of glue over the top gives us a barrier and when we paint over it, it's gonna give us some really cool effects. So set this aside to dry. Um, if you have a sunny place to put it outside where it won't blow away or your dog or cat won't walk all over it, do that. And then we can come back to it a little bit later on and go on to the next step. Okay, welcome back. You can see my tissue paper is nice and stuck on here and nice and dry. If you did end up with any extra, like I did, 
you could just tear it off or you could cut it off if you want to. If you're tearing or cutting and you accidentally tear some away from the actual um, drawing paper, don't worry about it. This kind of adds to the interest of it, so that's okay. But I am going to get it out of the way here for now. And um, I want to talk to you while I'm doing this about using watercolors. Like I was telling you, when you give watercolors a surface to be painted on that is already um, sealed with glue, they can do some really, really fun and interesting things, unexpected things. And you're going to have a lot of unexpected things because of all those wrinkles that you put in your paper and you don't really know what you're going to get. Sometimes you can look at the paper and you can see those wrinkles and maybe you can see something in it. A lot of times people see butterflies or bugs or creatures. So um, I'm going to say ahead of time that if you, we're, we're trying to maybe paint trees, but if you don't see trees, do not worry about it because you'll find some other interesting thing that will show up in here unexpectedly. So you can choose whichever direction you want your paper to go. You might look at those wrinkles and if you see something in it, you might decide, well, hmm, I'm going to paint it this way because I see something in the wrinkles this way. For me, I see something right here, and I won't tell you yet what it is, but um, it was a complete accident with those wrinkles, and it just showed up on its own. But just a little tip, if you do this again, sometimes you can move that tissue paper around and make the wrinkles go where you want and create something on purpose. So for now, I'm using a really big brush. You probably don't have this, and that's fine. I'm just using this because I want this to go by faster for you. And I can paint this whole page really quickly with a large brush. And I am thinking that I'm going to be doing trees or a forest, so I'm going to dip my large brush into some green, and I'm just going to start painting. And you can see the wrinkles really begin to jump out when you add paint. And feel free to add more than one color of paint. You do not have to stick with greens and browns that you might see in a forest. You can have other interesting colors. So I'm going to put a little turquoise in here. And I'm just kind of covering everything up. Maybe at the top I'll put a little bit of a lighter green. It's kind of a yellow green. But can you see how as you do this, the paint really sticks in all those wrinkly places. And I think down at the bottom I might put a little bit of maybe a little brown or, or something. And since this is really wet, all the colors that I put on are gonna be swimming around together and mixing, okay? You can even go like this and tip it if you want, just because it's sort of fun to watch the colors run all around and see what happens. Okay, now, this is a multiple step process here. I have to let this dry for a while because if I start painting on it now while it's really wet like this, it's just going to swim around and we'll never get to where we want to be. So that's your first step is after you've, well, I guess it's your second step because first was gluing and letting it dry. Now I'm asking you to put some paint on and then set it outside again or somewhere else to dry. And if you want for a while, you can kind of tip it and play with it and let these colors drip around. As you're doing this, you might see something develop. But that is your next job. I do want to do something right there. Okay, so just take care of that. And then I'll meet you back here in a little while after this is all dry. Okay, welcome back. My paper is nice and dry. So all of that glue was dried and I put the paint on it and that's all dry. So here we go now with the painting. Um, perhaps you see the same thing that I do in here, which is a large tree trunk here and then the tree up at the top. Down here is the ground. Now, in case that's difficult for you to see, I'm going to start painting on it, and then that'll, it'll get a little bit more clear, and that'll give you ideas of what you can do with your own painting. So let me start down here. Um, I'm going to start in the tree, actually. I've got some brown paint on my brush, and I'm just kind of using those wrinkles that we made on the paper as my outline to, um, to guide me and then just fill in the inside with brown where I think that the tree trunk would be. And I'm using a lot of really watery paint right now just because that's going to cover 
really well and then when it dries it'll look like nice kind of tree bark because that green that we used for the outline earlier I mean they um you know that wash of color that we did over it earlier that green is going to show through on this bark a little bit so it won't just be a plain brown tree it's going to have um, some of that kind of neat blue and green color in it and over here I'm going to make a tree root kind of come down I see a few wrinkles in the paper that look like they could be pretty cool tree roots so I'm just gonna follow those here's another one over here that I can do you know those kind of trees you see in fairy tales where um, or in I don't know the Wizard of Oz or in just different movies where they're sort of creepy and scary looking and they have all these roots well I'm kinda trying to do something like that with these wrinkles down here just use what you have. I remember how I talked about when you put the wrinkly paper on it almost gives you a magical um, picture. You don't really know what you're going to get. Okay, so that's what I'm working with here. I'm just going with what's already on here and following the wrinkles. And if you ask me, like, what, what happens if we don't see anything in the wrinkles? Well, you can invent your own stuff. I did that right over here. I'm, I'm trying to create a tree limb and have it sort of branch out up here. And, and if, if I don't have a wrinkle to follow, I can just use move my brush any way I want and just create tree branch that way. You can also do fun things where you don't have to just only use brown. For example, what if I thought it would be kind of fun to have maybe a little bit of something like um, how about a purple? I can dip into my purple a little bit. Let's see. Let me get a little bit more on the brush. <coughs> I can kind of make some of this tree a little bit purple too. And maybe some of these branches that come up, they won't just be brown. They'll be purple or whatever color. Why not? I mean, if you're making your own pa painting, you could have a fantasy painting where you have any colors that you like in it. And while I'm painting this, let me say to you also, if I haven't already said, if you don't see a tree in this, but you see a bird or some kind of insect or a creature or um, any kind of mystical, magical forest thing, you can invent whatever you want with this. You don't. The assignment is not about saying that you have to make a tree. You can do whatever you like. Okay, so if you see something else, then follow your imagination and let that happen. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going over some of these tree branches. Maybe some of them I'm going to thicken up. So I'm inventing that. That wasn't already there in those wrinkles. Some of it I'm painting and inventing myself. But I think I'm going to stop there. That's enough on the tree. I do want to do one thing. Right down here was when I started using brown and then I started using some purple that way. It'll look kind of odd if I don't also have some purple down here, so I'm going to let that color travel around and not just have it be on the top half of the tree. So I do a few purple things down there on the bottom. Okay, now we've got this tree, but it's just sort of floating. It's not in the ground or anything, so we need to plant that. And again, you can use colors that are unexpected. There is some beautiful stuff happening down in here with the colors that are already there, but why not give it some more fun by adding some other colors. I'm trying to be a little careful here because those purple tree roots that I painted down there are still wet so I'm really not letting this turquoise color or, uh, touch those because you know when you have one wet color and it touches another one you're gonna let those colors bleed and we don't want that right now. So I'm just kind of painting around those areas with this nice turquoise. I'm gonna fill in over here just sort of creating ground, dirt, moss, whatever it is. It's a little, it seems kind of like this tree is sort of on a hill to me. So I'm going to continue that over here. And some places will be darker than others. So maybe right up in here, maybe I'm going to have a lot of really dark turquoise. But then if I rinse out my brush and just kind of barely put any down in here, it gives us a little variety. We go from dark to light and it looks interesting that way. So stand back every once in a while and look at your tree. 
and decide if you have to make some more areas here and there that are a little bit darker. Maybe in here I want a little bit more dark. Okay, so always do that. Whenever you're drawing or painting, stop every once in a while and take a look at it. See what you think. Okay, I feel pretty good about all that. Now the rest, all I have to do on the rest of it is up here at the top. I already have some very pretty light green up in there. And I can put even more um, of that same light green color. Again, I'm being careful to stay away from those wet branches. And see how I'm, I have, my brush has really, can you see, it has quite a lot of paint on it. And I'm holding it sideways. I'm not painting on the tip. I'm holding down sideways like this. And I'm almost just gently brushing the paint onto the paper here and there. So I keep going into that paint and getting a lot of really nice wet paint and coming up in here and just filling in with it. If you have to tip your paper a little bit, you can. Maybe you have wrinkly paper and, and it's going to drip and you don't want it to, so just watch for that. Okay, and I'm standing back now to look at it, and what I see are a lot of little, kind of almost like small patchy polka dot areas, so I'm going to connect some of them. And it's okay if my tree leaves go off the edge of the paper too, that's fine. I'm just kind of making them connect a little bit. It felt like too many little pieces in my tree, and I want it more unified. Okay, and finally, the last thing I'll do is probably go into a darker perp a darker uh, green. If you only have one green, you can do something like add a little bit of brown in it to make it darker. You can make a blue green by adding a little blue into it. So I'm over here on the side mixing a nice dark purple. I'm, I'm sorry, I keep saying purple. A nice dark green. And again, I've got a whole bunch on this brush. And I'm coming down here, and here and there, I'm going to touch that on here. So my brush is held sideways. Okay. And because that light green is still wet, when I touch this dark green in there, you can see it's going to mix and blend and swim around. And that's a nice thing. I want that to happen. I want to be able to have this tree have more than one color of green and everything to blend together. So... That's why I'm doing the whole thing while it's wet, so that all these different greens can come together. Like that. I put a few on. I stop and look at it. Maybe put a few more. And stop and look at it. And guess what? I think that I am done one last thing is you always want to move your color around a little bit so that all the green isn't here and none down here. So here and there I'm going to put a little touch of green down at the bottom just for fun. Maybe some leaves fell. And then that turquoise that I have down at the bottom, how about if I put a couple little spots of turquoise up here in the top just so that those colors move around and that you don't always have all of your turquoise in one spot only or all of your whatever color in one spot bounce it around okay i think we're done that's it you painted a tree or whatever you painted like i said it might be a bug or a bird or an insect or something you painted using tissue paper so nice job and i hope you have a great summer this is our last class of the year so i will look forward to seeing you next year when you're a whole year old, well, you won't be a year older, but you'll be a grade up in school. So I look forward to seeing you. Have a nice summer. Bye-bye.